The cycle is the byproduct or the bycatch of the industrial vessels, which will be thrown into the sea. That's we collected it. As they regard it waste, and we collect this for our livelihood and make a lot of people employment. Justice Pra lives here in Elmina, one of the busiest fishing communities in Ghana. Justice has been involved in the cycle business for years. So we can, we peel today those who throw it away, the vessel owners, then they start frozen into us. And this has created a lot of employment, rather throwing into the sea as waste or to pollute the sea. As a chairman of the Ghana Bycatch Association, Mr. Pras says the business of cycle has a lot of beneficiaries and closing it down has made life unbearable, not just for the fishing communities, but has made fish very expensive for the general public. And for as time as today, about 10 months now, in fact, people are suffering. Taking people, even the taxi drivers, the market people and the banks and all, all over here. If government can just check in and look back for this, our business, can simply make this uh, BNI or whoever to come and investigate to know the number of people that this cycle bounding have taken them out of business. It's not only fishermen like Justice Pra who's been badly bruised following the ban of the cycle business by the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development. And the mom, we can't see baby, we can't miss the mom. What's the thing? Now we're not na naba, na naba, na naba, na naba, na naba. And I'm happy with you. I'm happy with you. Oh, but you know, it's my mom's senior team. I'm going to move on. Now, my man. Now, my man. Fifty-six-year-old Ifua Wanchi has relied on this business for ages, and the current state of affairs worries her. She expressed shock that such a decision could be taken to knock them out of business. Oh, and the bushman said, "I have my hand. I said, 'Baba, I put on my banana. Fine. Now I put on the banana. I said, 'You put on the gum. We go put them. And so sell the man. I buy him one. Say, 'You just say you put on the banana. Fine. My banana. I have done for you. So you bushman. Now my head to go to fun. Beauty Deku has also been in the fishing business for more than three decades. She explains that even though the fishing business has had its ups and downs." The banning of psycho has made life unbearable for them. But this year, last year, also, we did a lot of fishing. We went to Ngumu and found and bought a hundred yensu and hobium. On them, the means is can I get a job in your scan or any account? Since I bank for that account, baby, I have been a down for the year court. Now you can pay chow. Into so I money yes, I money the only means to cast an. Saiko no one sanu fumbla lego fish no one sanu fumbla ne yeye juma inchi ngo fuoka bank fuoka yemba suso ebi numu kova sina hadi yenye skan inchi skuvis inchi esrap enyu fonde onkasa na lego fish no one sanu fumbla yewa lego fish oji koko mansi asa ya fuoka la koko mansi ya kafane da ba kromu ha ya ba ho ne nyi ati ati so this is Almina one of the vibrant fishing communities in the country now. Behind me are hundreds of canoes that have parked here. We are told that the canoes number up to about 600. But the place is becoming dormant and dormant because nothing seems to be happening here. Here used to be a very, very busy place. It is called the Psycho Market. But we've come here to see that it is virtually dead, non-existent. 
silent. Nothing seems to be happening because the business has been collapsed. The minister announced the collapse of the psycho business. Following a joint news documentary that highlighted how small pelagic fish are caught by the industrial vessels and a big chunk of them thrown into the sea, the ministry banned the practice where these fishermen at Apam, Elmina and some parts of the western region meet the vessels on the sea to get the fish that would have been thrown into the sea to sell to the general public. And this is what has come to be called psycho. This move, according to those who were in the psycho business, has had a negative effect on their businesses and their livelihood. They state that burning what they do and diverting the fish that would have come to them to the Thermaport does not solve the issue. They believe the dumping, which actually destroys the sea, continues and their source of livelihood diverted elsewhere. Uh, the first term of uh, president, he was here and after the close season, he made us start the work again. But we don't see the reason why now they are saying they ban it. But what I'm, what I'm asking the fisheries minister is that, has she ever questioned those people who are saying that the psycho fish is illegal? Psycho is not the activity we are doing. They're bringing down the fish itself. Psycho is the fish itself. So if the trawlers are there fishing, taking about 10% of the fish to Tema, and those going for the fish are not working, then I don't see any reason you will say that you have banned the cycle. Because the same fish that we bring from the vessels, with our, this, is our, this is our careers, the same fish is being boxed to Tema at a very high cost, in which when we go and then bring the fish, it is very less for even the, for the school feeding, for the, the, the hospitals, the canteens and everything. For Justice Pra, the ministry should have a real look at the ban. Rather, buying imported carton fish, which is about three times double price than the waste product that we are buying, we are taking it here. What we normally hear is uh, the cycle are being disturbed by the local fishermen. Most of us working here are the local fishermen included. But we can see that this is not a problem because cycle is not going. The local fishermen are not getting the fish. So what was the cause? Then they see there's something different as being dumping the fish. So if we are being taken as compared as human beings, all the time expecting dead bodies around you, will you stay? You will never stay. So what I want to say, don't uh, think the cycle is evil. Cycle is a job that which has helped a lot of people. His colleague believes the ministry should listen to the fishers more than the NGOs. According to him, the NGOs are heavily sponsored by the European Union for their gains and the gains of the EU countries and not the fishermen here in Ghana. Even take for instance a sardine, when you take a sardine, a sardine tin, what is the size of a pelagic in a sardine? Yes, you have, you have parceled it very nicely for us to buy. But when you come and see us, I mean, having those small pelagics, then you are complaining. What I would tell the government is the government should forget about this EU people uh, or the, the NGOs getting into the fishing industry because the NGOs are on the EU's payroll. They pay them for their selfish uh, interest. And you see, they, they have their small, small NGOs here, the Hanupano and the, the, the Friends of the Nation. Go and see them, the leaders of this uh, uh, the, the, the NGOs in Ghana, they have uh, hotels and everything. That means they are using the fishing industry to chop from somewhere. It is an interesting phenomenon playing out here. The ministry collapses all the cycle markets along the coastal communities because of the catching of small pelagic fish to save the sea from further depletion. But the fishermen say the move has not stopped anything. It's just a move that aims at taking the job away from them and sending it elsewhere to Tema. Essentially, for them, nothing has been cured 
and they want the ban on them lifted. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejunyaakon, Cape Coast.